it's the next level. What's the ETA? A team's on the way. They'll be there in a few hours. A few hours? I'm a civilian. I can't just push a button anymore. The target's secure. No one's seen him. We're three fucking miles offshore, Grace. What do you think? I think if there's a way to screw this up, you'll find it. Look, I just want me wife back. I know. Bring Langley the terrorist and you'll have her. Hey, you ever you hear of an old soup called Liberty? Fuck's that got to do with anything? I'm not sure yet. How's your crew holding up? Yeah, all good. Uh, we are having a few laughs here, I'll tell you that. The target is the girl's brother? Yes, sir. You don't think it compromises her allegiances? Well, if it comes to that, I'll neutralize her. The compassion you show your team is truly touching. panelists welcome back to the show i'm mark and i'm steve and i'm jason and this week well this is a spoiler filled podcast of the second season of amazon primes the boys we have watched the whole season and we are now discussing these episodes from the point of view or that point of view as you would say but if you have not watched all the second season of the boys why are you here this is pretty much what steve says so i'm just <laughs> stating it right now so if it sounds different and weird this is Mark. So go back, watch the whole second season, and tell us what you thought of any of the individual episodes going forward. So Why are you guys switching roles? I don't know. Oh, no. <laughs> <laughs> okay, fair enough. Mark just decided to take over. Uh, I mean, um, as as, as you coup. heard, listeners, um, we, have, we are joined this week <laughs> by the famous Jason from the Podcastica <laughs> Network. Thank you so much for being here, Jason. We do appreciate you being on the podcast. And as we've said before, we appreciate a lot of what you've done because really it was yeah. it was you that brought Mark and I together. It was your podcast. That, that sounded weird. We're not like a couple or anything. And <laughs> yeah, we've been but, happy ever since. Yeah, oh, wait, uh, wait, you left me at the altar, dude. What the hell? <laughs> no, no, that's great. I mean, like I, we were saying just before we started recording, I, I've been loving the show. So I was happy to be invited to come on and talk about it with you two. Uh, it should be super fun. Very cool. So this is episode three of season two of The Boys called Over the Hill with the Swords of a Thousand Men. I think that's like from a poem or something somebody said. I don't know. Mm, I think um, so. But the synopsis that, I'm, that IMDb gave us is the boys take to the high seas to safeguard their prisoner. Homelander plays house, then pushes <laughs> Ryan over the edge. Starlight Literally. is forced to make an impossible choice. Stormfront reveals her true character. Yeah. No, oh, yeah. And it's funny because it says the boys take to the high seas because one thing I did notice about this episode is they're on that boat cruising around while a lot of stuff is happening with yeah. everybody else. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> okay, fine. <laughs> well, which is also a spoiler, too, because we got that in the San Diego Comic Con trailer, if you all remember, right. too. With so the whale. that was the one thing that we all were looking forward to. And I know we finally got this in this episode, and I just enjoyed yeah. that. <laughs> As I was taking notes, I was like, oh, it's really cool to see finally like a live action version of an Aquaman like character with fish and everything. And then I remembered, oh, yeah, except for the Aquaman movie. But other than that, <laughs> I never I never actually saw the Aquaman movie. It was so. actually pretty really? OK. Oh, yeah, 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 I liked yeah. it. I, I really enjoyed that movie. So it's crazy. Yeah. Well, he's always ripped and I, I could see every woman's appeal for that movie, though. But it's also just <laughs> so much going on with that movie. It's like, yeah, psychedelic. Almost. It's all over the place. And then you got yeah. Dolph Lundgren. You'd be like, oh, hold on. <laughs> Call Drago, isn't this? All right. Oh. <laughs> yeah, is it Dennis, Dennis Quaid? Is it, is it Dennis Quaid or was it? Dennis Quaid is Huey's dad. Yes. Right. Yes. In real life. Yeah. But isn't he in Aqua? He's not in Aquaman? No, Did no, I confuse no. that? Okay. For some reason, I thought he was. No. The guy who was in uh, Watchmen as the owl. Okay. Right. He's okay. in it. Yes. I forgot okay. his, the actor's name, but. Yeah, he's in a bunch of Far uh, Fargo stuff too, right? He's in. Yeah, he, he played yeah. Night Owl. Yeah. 
Yes. Cool. Anyway. <laughs> so before we get into our, our top three, our highlights, uh, what are you guys' general thoughts? You've already, we already kind of started talking about the episode a little bit, but what are your general overall thoughts of this episode? Well, we'll start with Jason. Oh, well, generally, I thought it was uh, damn good, just like pretty much all the episodes. Although I got to say, I like dark and edgy stuff, but this is borderline for me this season. I, <laughs> like sometimes I'm like, you don't have to push the gore further and further each time. You know, yeah. sometimes I'm just like, oh, OK, but none of I don't know. This episode, I thought it was I mean, it gets worse as it goes along. Yeah, but this episode was fine, even with like Stormfront breaking the brother's hands. That's gross, but it fits her character. And I don't know. I mean, I, I thought it was uh, funny and sad and gross and it, it uh, we learned new things about characters so i thought it was a great episode yeah I'm, I'm the same way i had forgotten about the breaking hands thing i guess i must have blinked the first time i rewatched <laughs> this so when i was rewatching it again yesterday i saw that and i, went, and I just kind of oh yeah. i forgot mm. about that because it like you see the bones and everything and i'm just like Ugh. yeah uh, but yeah it's it's really this this episode like you said, it really reveals a lot. It reveals a lot about Homelander. It reveals a lot about Stormfront and just her character. And who Kimiko a little bit. Kimiko a yeah. little bit. Yeah, we get to see her. You know, we get uh, we get Huey. There's there's a lot of stuff happening in this episode. And I'm sure we'll get to it. We get into our top three as well. Oh, definitely. Mm -hmm. My first impressions. Wow, a lot came out. <laughs> <laughs> And I think Stormfront came out at this point. <laughs> so yeah. So and that's that's actually my number three. Is about her. And then on top of that, you see a little bit more of Homelander and how crazy he is. He is one crazy loon, honestly. Mm -hmm. And I know, Steve, you and I already talked about the comic comparison about how uh, Black Noir is, in the comic is the clone of Homelander. And then in the comic, Homelander goes crazy and dies. And then, you know, Black Noir just goes even further in that per you know that you know perception of homelander within the comic so in this we have a great diversity within the two characters which i appreciate and i just love for the fact that okay this could be a completely totally different character with black noir and then maybe eventually we'll see homelander just they find a weakness eventually and they get rid of him i know? mean i haven't read the comic but black noir I, I find really interesting and it's in part because they're keeping him mysterious and they're just <laughs> letting a little bit out of time and it makes me want more but i think they're smart to hold off um i didn't know he was a clone of homelander in the comic but it makes me wonder if they're gonna go that route like you just kind of said uh, on the show in this episode it was interesting when he found out that compound v was behind all of their powers mm -hmm. yeah he started crying and yeah. that just made me feel like I, what i took from that is that his life has been a living hell and that's why it, it, he realized oh and now i had to suffer this because of some government intervention or, or this corporate intervention or whatever i don't know right. what did you guys it, think it makes that? you it makes you wonder if because it's like he has this healing factor obviously that we've seen come into mm -hmm. play and we're going to see more of that towards the end of this the season but it makes you wonder if like wolverine does he still feel the pain also because that would yeah. that would make sense of oh, why yeah. he realizes kind of like a deadpool kind of thing that he he still feels the pain even though he's he's regenerating he's whole healing. yeah uh, and did we see i mean this is jumping ahead but you said it was spoiler filled like mm -hmm. he gets mm -hmm. part of his mask taken off towards the end and it's his face is kind of burnt like deadpool right yeah Correct. i think yeah. so he's got like yeah. scars on his face or something like that so he's, he's definitely got that kind of edginess to him yep yeah hey man Want a fresca? Thanks. So should I do my number three? Absolutely. Yes. Okay. So it's Stormfront. So um, my computer keeps auto-correcting Stormfront to Storefront, which is not as good of a superhero name. <laughs> yeah, right? <laughs> Just did it again. I found another spot here. Um, anyways, what I think is cool about this character is she comes on and she's new, so we don't know anything about her. And... I think the last couple episodes and this episode, she's portrayed as this sassy girl who stands up for women's rights and isn't afraid to tell the man to fuck off, basically. Mm -hmm. And 
and uh, Starlight looks impressed with her. And I think that is smart because when you introduce a new character like this, that's going to turn out to be the bad guy, but you want to throw people off the scent. So you need to give them some other characteristic to make sense why they would bring this character in. And so you think it's going to be like, maybe she'll be a mentor to Starlight or something like that. But this is the episode where her true colors come out and that maybe she's worse than all of them and they kind of just stole that out slowly too like we see her chasing kenji kimiko's brother blasting through walls through people's apartments and they look really scared and then the camera cuts over to kenji but you can still hear her powers going and the screams stop mm -hmm. and that's when i was like well what happened there what what happened there yeah <laughs> yeah and the, and then she goes, then you see the apart, like whole floors just being destroyed at once with her lightning flicker and everything. And um, then it's like, oh, I think she's killing all of them. So that was like quite a intense feeling. Yeah. And I mentioned it last episode and we get another, we get another bit of it here as well. When she calls Homelander Gramps, you know, which is, which it's is sort kind of, of ironic. Yeah, it is exactly. Yeah. <laughs> Cause we know that actually she's way older than way you. older, a yeah. hundred years so, older. Fun. Yeah. <laughs> but yes. then it gets really over here where she's breaking Kenji's hands off and mm -hmm. she holds his head and says, open your eyes. I like to see the lights go out. It's like, okay, she's, she's, just as bad or worse yeah. than anybody. And <laughs> exactly. she calls him a uh, yellow bastard. So she's mm -hmm. also a racist. So I was like, yeah, exactly. All right. yeah. yeah. I was hoping for another hero to look up to, but nope. Nope. No. Nope. Nope. No. We don't Not get that let us here. That. Nope. <laughs> so my number three is uh, is just that beginning when Butcher is apologizing to, to Huey and Huey kind of <laughs> ineffectually kind of fights him and kind of punches him. Yeah. <laughs> you know, and it's kind of like when you're a little kid. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. When you're a little kid. And, but then he gets that call from Mallory, you know, and she's asking him to bring in the female's brother. And what, are, what is he going to do if the female becomes a problem? And he basically says that he'll take her out if that's if that's a problem. He doesn't I guess he doesn't know about her healing factor at this at this point. Maybe he yeah. just doesn't know all her powers and stuff. But uh, it, it really looked to me like both Frenchie and her overheard him say that. Yeah, because I for sure Frenchie did, and, and she may have as well because she was coming down the stairs there, so. or at least she sensed something because she mm -hmm. gave him a dirty look. Yeah, yeah, that whole dynamic between the uh, the brother and sister is really interesting in this mm -hmm. actual show. I it, well, it. it was cool because I don't. It's been a little while since I saw the first two episodes, but she's just been so hardcore and. Yeah. reactive and violent and i think the brother brings out this tender side of her that we hadn't mm -hmm. seen before and we also learn that she knows the special sign language i don't think we'd seen that before does she know that is she in uh know that in the comic like that i'm not aware sign of language hmm. yeah i'm not sure i know that in the comic she doesn't she never has a name she's just called the female the female and yeah, yeah. and i don't think i'm i'm assuming then that means that the brother is probably not I in think he's comic. just called the male. Oh, well, in the <laughs> in in, <laughs> in the wiki it says the male and then okay. it has his real name. Okay. Yeah. Hmm. Uh, what one thing just just real quick uh, sure. back on uh, I forgot to mention this is just a quick point but on Stormfront it was interesting that we see Mallory is investigating Liberty so that they kind of planted mm -hmm. the seed of that but then just kind of dismissed it. That's all. Yeah, and it, and I had that in my notes that she we see her with that that Manila envelope and she pulls out the the Budweiser ad that has Liberty on it and she asks Butcher if he knows is a Butcher yeah, she asks him if he knows anything. Where mm -hmm. did, we don't know where she got that envelope from though, right? Do, do they ever reveal where she got cuz I know later I think it's it's a similar envelope that has all the other secrets about Stormfront in it. So I wonder if that came from the Church of the Collective. I feel, yeah, I feel like she doesn't know that much yet. So I don't okay. think she has all the secrets yet, right? She's just, maybe she knows something and she's trying to confirm it. But anyway, that's mm -hmm. what it seemed like. So what's your number three, Mark? Uh, that would be Homelander trying to get Ryan to show his power with flight. You know, he pushes <laughs> this kid. You know, it, that was like a 20-foot drop. Come on. You know, what a jackass. So wrong. He just, just yeah. pushes him, thinking, assuming because he's my son, he's going to fall and recover properly. You know, the kid is really upset about it and pushes mm -hmm. Homelander, and you see his eyes light up. You get that whole Superman or... Brightburn vibe that we got, mm -hmm. you know, you know, Steve and I had covered Brightburn a long time I, ago. I like, that was a great movie. But the fact that you get this and it's just like, okay, it's soup again, soup at this point <laughs> with that eye 
lighting yeah. up, but the kid really starts to hate him at that point, and you really get that. He doesn't know if he could trust his biological father. He doesn't know where to go with this. He looks at his mother, and he loves his mother, and you know this, but... And on top of that, the mother actually protects him, saying, you know, and attacks Homelander verbally, saying, what are you doing? <laughs> you know, and, you know, she's trying to hide Ryan from all these powers. Kind of similar to what, you know, if, if you think Billy, Billy just wants to use people who have the power. He kind of sets the kid aside, but we see a different part of Billy at the very end of the season mm -hmm. regarding this. So he's there to protect the kid at this point because... Although he doesn't take him on himself. No. That's, yeah. That's but, notable. <laughs> yeah. And on top of that, you know, the fact that, you know, he sees that that's part of his wife at that point. That's the last part of his wife yep. because his wife's gone. Mm -hmm. You know, sorry, spoilers, everybody, but... <laughs> but kind of like I th would say, kind of like Kenji woke up something in Kimiko to mm -hmm. bring out her humanity more. I think yeah. Butcher's wife brought out more of that in him exactly yeah it's going to be interesting when when we do get the season when season three comes out to see where ryan is at or if they have ryan in it and see if there is any sort of relationship between uh him and billy or if billy just completely you know disregards him yeah. uh, to keep him safe that's going to be an interesting dynamic he could end up being the biggest super villain of all you never know you yeah. never know yeah <laughs> all right so we're on to our number twos yeah, Jason. I'll actually continue on with Homelander. I think he's a great character. He's so he's so creepy. I mean, he's so powerful and he's such an asshole. And he's it, one thing that's interesting to me is he has this need to be loved. That's mm -hmm. kind of what drives him to be admired and to be loved. And I think that's why he's trying to get close to his son. Just he's bored and he wants to, uh, I don't know, have someone take after him. And so he has, you know, human drives, but he's got all this power. And so I think that's arrested his development. He's sort of like still an adolescent. He never grew. Yeah. That's, yeah. that's a good, that's a good point. Well, because we see that at the breakfast table there when he's trying to control and when Ryan asked for one pancake and he kind of goes, yeah, one, just one. And then he's like, give him more syrup and, and this and that. And when yeah. he starts to speak, spanish he, he wants to take him outside and they never do eat breakfast at all yeah and he like he's interesting because he's like a ticking time on i mean he's not gonna just destroy everybody he's that's not what he's about he wants he wants love and respect and everything mm -hmm. but if he's upset he's not getting what he wants he might throw a little tantrum and then mm -hmm. well, destroy everybody he reminds uh, me of certain politicians but we won't go there <laughs> oh, yeah, exactly. <laughs> but also it all boils down to what was the first thing we saw that really creeped us out this season? Him drinking yeah. the frozen yeah. milk. Come on. Yeah. It's it's as if he's still a child, yeah. a baby. Mm -hmm. Right. And and we know that he grew up everything. in a lab and didn't have affection exactly. from his mother. So that's into his whole pathology. That, mm -hmm. That's whole his whole pathology. Yeah. That's who yeah. he is deep down. And literally he is and they bring it up later on. Basically, he is a product of this company, mm -hmm. but he doesn't know how to react or and and talk to people as a person because he yeah. was never brought up as a person. He's a broken he was man. Brought up as a product. Well, yeah, and we're going to see that arc throughout the rest of the season. We're going to see him make this kind of descent into really madness because he's he's going to lose control of everything yeah. and then at the end he, he kind of gets it back but you can still see like mark you talked about in the comics how he kind of goes crazy or has a nervous breakdown it, it looks mm -hmm. like he's getting close to that so uh, yeah, yeah we're, we're seeing that that extreme narcissism that he has this need to control yeah. and and everything else so yeah it's a good and in this episode it's like this nightmare version of the typical beaver cleaver family only the mm -hmm. father is this monster yeah. who raped the mother and then expects to be included in their life yeah and it, i had it this horrifying i had this as number one because I, I really liked that they basically confirmed for us that that's because they kind of it's it's not really left up in the air in in the first season of whether he raped her or not but i think yeah. it's i think it's clear in this in this exchange between the two of him that, yeah. that he raped her i think that's yeah 
yeah yeah because yeah, she's like he's like i did you a favor and and also you can tell throughout the season that she really does care for butcher mm-hmm. like i wonder too was she just as bad as all the rest of them and she actually had an affair but i think this season it becomes pretty clear that he raped her yeah yeah it was really prevalent that she was you know exactly you know raped at that point and you know she really did love butcher but the, yeah. the company as it were segregated her and pushed her aside well no saying, that's oh, that's well, how she kept billy safe was she yeah she in did the company. but that was the agreement but regardless she yeah. was still an asset to that company yeah, yeah. and having this kid finding out that she still she what she didn't have an affair and that she does still love butcher mm-hmm. it's i cling on to these moments in this show where people actually do good are good you know because you actually know. Exactly. Yeah. and there are yeah. plenty of decent people but there are so many just scuzzy people in the show we i think oh, mark definitely. and i talked about it last episode that that really when you look look at it uh frenchy and and uh, mother's milk mother's are milk. really yeah. two they're really decent guys in the yeah. end that they're just trying to to get by and we, we're going to find out that frenchie has this deep dark secret that he's been torturing himself with and uh, so yeah it's it's going to be interesting going forward as we, we rewatch these episodes a uh, huey is good and uh, i mean nobody's perfect but mm-hmm. like, oh. he's got a good heart and so does starlight and she's another one that i thought might go bad with the influence of the seven you know when she finally accepted her costume that doesn't cover up as much i thought maybe she might just go full <laughs> bore into that direction but she hasn't she's still a full-on hero even in this episode exposing yeah. bot and everything yeah exactly. trying to very good yeah and that really goes right into my number two which is is a train when he goes to starlight after the compound b uh, is revealed to be how superheroes are made and again it, it's like we just talked about starlight is kind of doing what she has to do it's and she kind of tells a train well if, if my betrayal comes out i'm going to tell them that you knew about it and you're going to be in just as much trouble as i am and she says and i love that whole exchange because we we're, what we're seeing on some of these with some of these heroes, we're seeing the human side of them. Cause mm-hmm. like a train, when she yeah. says something about, it's not about the money and a train says only people who always had money say, say that, that. Right. you know, and we kind to see this, this uh, more uh, softer side of, of a train. We see that he, and we know that from last season that he kind of grew up in the projects and being a superhero was kind of his way of getting out. Yep. Very true. Also, I think she has on him that he killed pop claw. So that's yes, more like that's right. Yeah. Oh yeah, that that's always uh, yeah. She in the ransom. in the last episode she <laughs> talked about that that she saw the autopsy report and all the needle marks and that no mm-hmm. one that he would, yeah. is the only one fast enough to be able to put all those needles in at the same time like that. So yeah, right. So yeah, that would lead me to my number two, which would be uh, yeah. Well, we finally get that San Diego Comic Con trailer scene mm-hmm. that we've been anticipating and wanting so much, and we finally got it. So you know the deep riding on the boat and his way of proving himself to Vought you know, he could be brought back into the seven, you know, and then Billy doing fucking that, that diabolical. Was, <laughs> that was so extreme, honestly, you know, <laughs> Billy just throwing the throttle and the behind scenes thing. Uh, actually, they talked about it on San Diego Comic Con, which I enjoy, is that apparently Carl Urban had the throttle and did push it so it could go right through. So they all felt that velocity of that. You mean force. there was actually a big thing to go through <laughs> was it was there something oh, actually... oh there was, it was, it was a cg boat, though so, the whale was so, cg yeah the, right, okay. the whale was definitely cg they but real they whale pushed it. <laughs> <laughs> no animals were harmed in the production of this <laughs> exactly you know we don't want rima yet yelling at us so but you know uh, we love her but and i do understand but oh my god but just even seeing a cg whale like that was like oh my yeah. god and it, the aftermath and the prosthetics that go involved in that. I just loved it. Huey Especially, hanging out in this. Yes. Yeah, just, yeah, yeah. Jack Quaid just like <laughs> saying there. And all I could think about is Billy Joel. Yeah. yeah. I'm <laughs> for my second week. <laughs> I, yeah, this was, this is really, really good. And it just escaped me. I have in my notes. I, I didn't notice it until this rewatch, but we get some more ideas of the church, the church of the collective's influence because yes. They somehow got the information about the boat, about the police, and that's what she brings in that comes from Adano, Adana, whatever his name is. She says this came directly from Allison Adana, and this is the information that's going to get you back into the Seven. And she gives it to Deep, and that's how he shows up out there before everybody else from the Seven. And they kind of – when they do show up, they're like, what are you doing here, Deep? You're not supposed to be – 
involved in this. So I thought that was kind of cool that I didn't pick up on that the first time watching it, but on this rewatch, I was like, Oh, now I get it. Trying to prove himself. Yeah. And yeah. and we're seeing, like I said, we're seeing how much the church has got its kind of claws into everything. Yeah. Yeah. Right. Trying to influence. not pop claw though. She's gone. <laughs> <laughs> Well, my number one is about the deep and he, uh, for starting off to just be this character that you're like, okay, you're an asshole. I mean, I still think he's an asshole, but he's an interesting character because he feels lost. Mm -hmm. it, it's really interesting when he starts talking about the fish, like, oh yeah, my buddies are so rowdy, you know, talking about <laughs> some guppies or something. And he just it's clear that his world of friends is these fish and he's mm. more alienated from people. He, he gets along and relates to the fish better and people, when they hear this, they just think he's nuts. And so that makes him even more alienated from the people. And it, and I think it makes him feel sad. And in here they're talking about how, you know, when he grew up, he had a lifetime of hearing fish in restaurants beg for their lives. And on one level, like a lot of things in the show, it's ridiculous and, and funny and silly, but also it's just deeply sad for this guy. Mm -hmm. And yeah. and with the whale too, like she's all, I was just worried about Lucy here and Homelander's like, oh yeah, whatever. And it's kind of funny. He made a joke about it. But yeah. It's, <laughs> but it's also, if you look at it from the deep's point of view, it's like this creature that he knew and was connected with just got brutally murdered. And it exactly. could be like if somebody in your life got murdered mm -hmm. so it's this exactly. show totally does that huey is leaving the message for starlight about that billy joel video where the kid is about to kill himself and billy joel comes along and gives him his second win and i realized that you, you're my second win it's at the same time for me kind of cheesy and silly but also really heartwarming you know so <laughs> yes. yeah yeah exactly show does that really well yeah, it's really it's really cool, and like that's what I was saying earlier that we're starting to see a, a different side of these these heroes, even the ones that are quote yeah. unquote the bad ones. You know, he goes and he tries to apologize to uh, to Starlight for what he did, and she basically tells him to you know to f off, right. and then Stormfront kind of says the same thing to him, and so you see this fact that he's trying to get redemption, but it's not every time he he it's in the first season it was funny when we saw those kind of things happen to him, but now we're seeing the tragedy. A little like, sad. Yeah. Like and here, said. even when he's talking to her, he says, I'm going to do everything in my power to renew my light, not just for you, but for all the female people. So that just shows again, like that he's not quite on everybody's, you know, he should say women, no. not the female right. people. Right. Exactly. exactly. <laughs> he's still not totally there yet. He hasn't figured yeah. out. Yeah. Um, <laughs> <laughs> really good. So I had to switch things up a little bit. We kind of already talked about my number one. So mm -hmm. um, I'm going to uh, go into my notes a little bit here that uh, I, I really liked. And it didn't occur to me until this watch that the, the name of the boat, I, I mean, I knew the name of the boat is my big wet dream, but I think, I think there was a line in the first season to Huey. I think Butcher was, or somebody was giving Huey everything that he needed or wanted and, and Huey wouldn't accept it. And they're like, you could mess up, you could mess up a wet dream. And so I thought that was kind of cool. That they there's maybe that's a callback or I might be totally forgetting what happened. That's pretty season. cool though. If it's a good callback. <laughs> yeah. Though. Yeah. So I thought that was, that was kind of cool. And I had to go and actually had to look back in the last episode to remind myself because I was like, wait, did we watch that? Did we see this video in the first ep in the second episode as well? And, and we did. So this song, no, we did. Um, you know, my sec, my second wind is kind of, uh, been recurring in these last two episodes. Yep. I was just going to say about that. I love that he loves Billy Joel in general. Yeah. It's just mm -hmm. a funny, and I like Billy Joel. He's yeah. a great songwriter. Yeah. Same here. And um, the, the lyrics to that song, you're having a hard time and lately you don't feel so good. You're getting a bad reputation in your neighborhood. It kind of fits. So I, yeah. it, was, it was a cool opening. Yeah, definitely. My number one would be Mother's Milk pleads to Butcher in the cave about easing up on everybody. You know, that, that they are all being way pressured and Huey is just showing all the signs of falling apart due to everything that Billy's been doing. Billy's that kind of, uh, I'm not saying that Negan character, but kind of pushing somebody to get what they want. And he's not looking at the person as a person. He's just u mm -hmm. utilizing as them as a tool. Mm -hmm. You know, he points out that Huey's like the canary, you know, Mother's Milk points out to actual Billy that, you know, Huey's the canary in the coal mine. Mm -hmm. You know, without the canary to help him, Billy won't get what he wants, which is his wife back. 
and Mother's Milk's family back as well. So, you know, without, you know, don't smother this kid. Don't smother us. Don't do this. Because without us, you're not going to get what you want, you know? Right, right. Well, he's reminding Billy also that, that Huey's the one that keeps him human, that keeps him exactly. from, from mm-hmm. going too far. And that's why I like, there's going to be, we're going to call back to this and oh two or three more episodes it's it's going to come up again when billy calls huey to tell him that he's leaving and mm-hmm. he call he's going to call huey his canary and then we're going to we're going to see that that, that episode where mother's milk is going to ask huey tell me exactly what he said and so we're going to find out this is this call back to this canary thing is really killed mm. and and later butcher's wife billy's wife becca says i like all your friends especially huey he's good for you yeah <laughs> <laughs> yeah, well, and we're going to get the reveal about the the similarities between Huey and Billy's brother later on in the season as well. So that's going to be kind of cool. Yeah. All right. So we should move on to some notes. Um, trying to see what if there's anything that we haven't discussed. Uh, it's in my notes. I think the only thing I've got is really everything that I think everything in my notes we've discussed. I thought it was cool that 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 uh, Kamiko's brother you said Kenji is his name. Yes. Uh that he he used he used the chain to rip a hole in the tape so that he could get his finger out cuz he you know he has to use his hands for his power and then once he gets the finger out then he can move the can and tear it up so that he can cut the rest of the the tape away but it really his you know his kind of freedom doesn't last very long because he gets up to the top of the boat and Kamiko kind of tackles him there. And then, you know, after he kills the police the, or pulls down the police helicopter. And that was another misdirect, I feel like, because you saw uh, Frenchie tempt him with the Coke. Mm-hmm. And then it looked like he really wanted to drink it when the guy left, but he was actually going to use it as a mm-hmm. tool to get himself free. They yeah. do little clever things like that a lot. Oh, yeah. Like in this, I know I'm jumping ahead here, but in this recent Good. episode, they're watching, uh, there's a, uh, something came on the news i forget what it was about starlight being in trouble or something and mm-hmm. um huey's back with is it lamplighter is that mm-hmm. the guy's name yeah and, lamplighter. and he and huey's looking at the tv going oh my god and then you go over to the tv and they're still watching the porn it's not even the news <laughs> yeah <laughs> and then they switch over to the news and they see the starlight <laughs> <laughs> I only had two that are left in my notes. We already, you know, Jason, you topped on them and Steve as well. So the only two that I have left is the uh, the storyboard presentation of the Seven movie in front of Ashley, Maeve, and, and A-Train and Starlight and Stormfront. Stormfront's tweaks about it be- being global, or she tweets, I guess, being global and then goes into her rant. <laughs> You know, yeah, her, her little tweaks being being, yeah, I love that when she said when the guy's like, sure, we can make little changes, and she's like, no, no, this is global. I love that. <laughs> yeah, it, you could see a, like powerful actor doing that, like Brad Pitt or something. No, mm-hmm. no, no, we're gonna change all this. Yeah, <laughs> exactly. I loved when he's describing the movie. And he goes, this is the moment the seven became the seven rousing music, Hans Zimmer. Yeah, Yeah, it was great. I love, it's in my, it's in my quotes. I love how he does, he does Maeve's voice, does that kind of falsetto. You mean like a team up, you know, and Maeve Maeve is just sitting there just, oh Oh God. Really? I can't do this. Poor PR girl who just wants this all to work out. She's excited about everything this yeah. is great oh, right <laughs> ashley forget it ashley is headed for a nervous breakdown and that's my other point with everything that's going on she fears for her job and i think her life with the position that she's put in you know you know she's pulling her hair out at points <laughs> that i mentioned in the last podcast you know i was it chloe minifee yes colby minifee colby minifee that's yeah. Ginny right. on fear and yeah, she and was Ginny in on uh, fear of the and she was Dead. in jessica jones the first first or second yes. season of jessica jones so. yeah so yeah she she has a way of like being so diverse because you know with, with colby what she does in fear she's very aggressive she's the antagonist this she's the subservient little host to deal with all these people and then with, with jessica jones what would you say she was in that steve oh she was i mean she was the frantic sister right she was kind of Kind of had a hippy dippy kind of side to her, yeah. but at the same time, when she, when she gets, yeah, she had definitely a manic kind of uh, way about her. But she was definitely less 
like she it was many years ago so she was younger and she played much younger than what ashley is as well i think but so. yeah i'm just saying that she plays a variety of different characters oh yeah for sure for sure yeah. yeah so it shows her stretch as an actress mm-hmm. so i thought that was pretty cool but i just find it funny because towards the end you actually do start to see some of her hair missing on her head <laughs> <laughs> so it's just like you could see it's like oh this is really taking in wow not a great job to have no no <laughs> <clears throat> so this is a, a time where we move on to quotes i didn't and... do my notes i got a couple you got oh, a yeah. few quotes yeah is that right? No, he's got notes. He's got yeah, notes. Just, just a couple. Oh, okay. Yeah, sure. When when the deep is standing on the whale with his fist at his side, it spouts off its blowhole and it kind of gets in his face a little bit. Uh, that reminded me of this time when I was on a whale watching tour on this boat, kind of like the one they were on. And the whale came right up to the side of the boat and the people running the tour were like, this never happens. It's crazy. So we were all like 20 of us leaning over the side of the boat. It was kind of tipped and looking and then the whale spouted off and it smelled like fish guts. It was <laughs> disgusting. We're all like leaning over and they were like, oh, leaning back. Away from I, it. I'm glad you bring that up because I, I had, I noticed that in this last watch that he kind of does that superhero pose on the, on the top of the whale. Like, you know, <laughs> Yeah, it was it was <laughs> iconic, but it didn't turn out so well. Uh, um, yeah, it's true. <laughs> you mentioned the uh, the storyboard for the Dawn of the Seven movie, and yeah. I was looking at the characters. Um, I definitely saw Translucent, The Deep, Home Lantern, Queen Maeve, and Black Noir. Uh, that's five. Lamplighter mm-hmm. was he in there? I don't. I didn't see him on the story. I think there. I, I think I think he might have been the- to the right or the right. Or the left, be, but like a train replaced somebody yeah and i think the there was somebody else who he had like uh a cowl and with pointy ears kind of batman but he had like an m so i don't think that was a train no yeah. i think that was nah. yeah that, i can't remember what she called him in the the first the first episode she said you you've now been here longer than blank so and so uh okay. yeah like like oh. master runner or something it wasn't right. master runner, but like something like that magnificent I don't master bator <laughs> <laughs> and then oh the only last note i had is um we saw congressman newman on tv demanding an investigation into all of this and yeah. so I, I imagine it must be really interesting for you guys to go back and watch App, knowing what you know and see the little seeds planted and stuff yeah like I wasn't we said paying any attention to that when i first watched it <laughs> yeah like we said in, in like in episode one when rainer's head pops the very next scene is newman on the tv is on yeah. on tv so that was our first that was pretty cool hint and uh in uh, this one i tried to catch in this one that if there was anything i think it's just the fact that i, I think her her role is kind of to like play against vaught but she's also part of Vought at the same time. So she's like, that's what I think that's what her agenda is. I think she Mm. really, Mm. you know, is, is, is kind of controlled by Vought to protect. Oh, okay. Like, like to put up this faux opposition Mm -hmm. kind of. Yes. Yeah. Interesting. I think that's Mm. what, I think that's what in the comic, I think there's a comic book character similar to that. that, That's kind of their role. I think TV, the guys on TV podcast industries talked about that. Mm. That's cool. Do you have any other notes, Jason? Okay, so quotes. Um, Jason, you could go first. Just do one. Yeah, yeah, if you want. I liked Butcher teasing Huey. He's like, "How long are we gonna be sulking about like some Ponzi eyeline wearing emo twat?" <laughs> <laughs> He's so good. His his lines are so. I know. Good. Uh, well, yeah, let me just do so one more because it's the only other one I have. But Huey's like, when he's like, everybody's giving him props for exposing bot mm-hmm. it's on tv and he's mm-hmm. like butcher's like whatever and he was like you can't even give me this can you not one goddamn win he goes i'll tell you what when we're all done here i'll buy you a nice big family sized <laughs> bottle of top shelf lube and i'll tickle your balls till you beg me to stop and even then i won't i just won't do it <laughs> that was great yeah yeah i love that scene. Um, <laughs> i i loved uh, i've got a couple that we haven't already talked about here uh i loved when stan edgar when when you said like when uh vr person when the, the compound v thing 
gets released that they don't know where Homelander is. And Stan Egger says, he will know when I want him to know. Just keep <laughs> the rest of the infants on 99 in check, will you? So I thought that was great that he, that they have the top floor of the building, but the executives have a lower floor. You know, the guys that actually run the company have a lower floor than the heroes. Yeah. <laughs> and that's the way Homelander Yep, demand. Exactly. I'm sure. Uh, no, definitely. And then the only other one I had was when they're on when they when the police uh, approach the boat. <laughs> Billy says, "Well, a strange is just a friend you ain't met yet." So, <laughs> that is true. I thought like, you said this was. <laughs> yeah, I thought you said this was your friend's boat. Well, a strange is just a friend you ain't met yet. So, it was great. All right. Well, I only have I only put the one that I have that I thought was pretty good. And that would be Stormfront at the presentation. And she just looks at the, the presenter and goes, You're right, old women, as n- unknowable Hitchcock bitches or Michael Bay fuck dolls. I know that a lifetime of jerking off to Transformers <laughs> didn't exactly make you popular with the ladies, but effort would be nice. You know what I'm saying? I love I love his response is I had two sisters. I had two sisters. <laughs> uh, <okay. laughs> And the last one would be Billy going, you guys touching your tips to Huey and Mother's Milk when they were celebrating about the information on the news about <laughs> Bob in the very beginning. But that's all it was. So. But uh, it's just like the, the typical Billy Butcher one-liner quotes. And I, I still go back and to season one about the whole Spice Girls things. I still can't get over that thing. <laughs> yeah. yeah. <laughs> the casting in this show is right on Carl Urban. Oh, definitely. And- the guy who plays Homelander, just amazing. Anthony Star, Stark, or yeah. Star or something. And it, I'd like to and see and him have... in something else because I never have. Mm-hmm. I can't. Imagine I, I would him like to see him in a regular asshole. suit because all we see is him in that super suit. Right. We've never seen him in regular clothes. I, I'm hoping that we actually get to see him try to fit into society. Right. Maybe see he has Homelander an alter ego go... that we don't know about. <laughs> yeah, exactly. Well, have, did you guys see the the teaser the teaser trailer for season three? No, I didn't even know they had one. Yeah, it's it's all the different. It's all of them. They're kind of talking about different things, um, but it, it might be a little spoilery. It's not really anything plot line related. But there's it shows Homelander and he's got like either a black wig on, or like he's dyed his hair black and he's in a t-shirt and he's like, oh, I'm wow. in my I'm in my street clothes to talk about the upcoming the boys or whatever. And then like Mother's Milk and Huey break in, and all of them have each individual has the, the shirt of their character on so it's pretty funny so <laughs> yeah look for it cool. it should be out there somewhere i think it was a, a, a i hope it wasn't a fan thing that i just got stuck into but it's not all the actors so it had to be had to be legit yeah yeah well that's pretty and it cool, even though. has jensen ackles at the very end saying something and rolling his eyes so it's i'm <laughs> i'm so excited to see him in season three hope that doesn't spoil anything for anybody that you, you didn't know that but jensen ackles is confirmed to be season three of the boys he's gonna have to play a character well it's cool it's cool so we have podcast recommendations. So, uh, Jason, do you have any? <laughs> Obviously, you come from a podcast network. Please, so yes. Shamelessly plug. Shamelessly plug. Oh, was I supposed to have ones for, like, that I'm not on? No, you can. No, you, you can. do whatever you want. Yeah, what I mean, I'm just listening to political podcasts, which make me feel on edge all the time. So I won't recommend any of those. But uh, <laughs> that's pretty much all I'm listening. There's one called The Truth that's got these really kind of Twilight zone stories that they tell. And that's cool. I, I recommend it, The Truth. It's, the truth. it's okay. pretty, pretty crazy. Yeah, I'll stick with that. And we could also hear you on the podcast network. Yeah, too. so I am doing, um, I'm having this existential crisis on walking dead cast right now because we decided after we didn't like fear that we would cover mostly walking dead world beyond the new uh spinoff and people aren't really digging that so i have to figure out what to do we might try 50 50 coverage but minimal on both i don't know that's cool mandalorian's coming out pretty soon and we'll be covering that on house podcastica so excited for the mandalorian coming back same here I just finished rewatching season one again and forgot how good <laughs> it was. Like, I'm just like, each episode was better and better. Yeah. And I, yeah. So it's yeah, really, really good. The only one I've got is Michael Rosenbaum's Inside of You with Michael Rosenbaum this week. He interviewed uh, a woman who escaped from the Nexium cult. And yes. um, so I, Sarah I, I, Edmondson. 
Yes, thank you. Yes. Um, I haven't. I don't. It's, it's queued up. I haven't listened to it yet, but I listened to the first half and it was really good. She's one of the main people in the HBO docu series The Vow. Okay, and she also wrote a a book called Scarred about the whole experience. Yes, sweet. And then I was I was hoping that I'd be able to say that we have to go back. Lost revisited had an episode, but it hasn't come out yet this this week. So hopefully. They'll be dropping an episode here pretty soon. Michael Rosenbaum has an interesting one to talk about that because he co-starred with Allison Mack on mm -hmm. uh, Smallville, yes. and she's like a big part of that cult. Yeah, he brings that up during the actual podcast. Oh, I haven't with, listened. Uh, yeah, it, it was an interesting listen too. I, I still have to finish it. But my next one would be on your network, Jason. That would be on the podcast again at work that would be strange indeed with yeah, uh, I'm Rima glad you brought that Fake. up because I didn't mention it and Remus probably like what the <laughs> fuck dude that would be <laughs> <laughs> uh, their, their coverage of uh, the haunting of Bly Manor and uh, they're moving on to episode three I believe this week so, so I'll good. That show, be watching that yeah. soon haunting of Bly Manor I had a laugh too because I was, I was taking my niece home with me this weekend to stay for the weekend she fell asleep during the podcast. So I guess her day was not so great at school because she actually physically went to school. So, <laughs> but she actually said she watched the episode, you know, and she, she goes, Oh, I'll, I'll listen to the podcast. Nice. <laughs> so I, I think she, uh, she does enjoy the podcast and she does enjoy the show. So listen to Rima and Paik on Strange, Strange Indeed. Indeed. And then also don't forget Rima and Jason on that same <laughs> feed are covering the Great British Baking Show. Correct. Yeah, we decided to do something strange indeed and cover that. <laughs> yeah, and get fat at the same time for those who people who are not on keto. It's really fun. <laughs> it's, it's really been fun to do it. We just got through Chocolate Week. Next week is Patriot Week. Super fun. I've got it. It is it is queued up uh, next on my, my list of podcasts that I'm listening to. Wendy came on with us this week. I, I, I saw yes. that. So I'm excited to hear her. And she'll be on Adrenaline Cinema soon, everybody. So check that on the Pyrocore Entertainment Network. So with that, how could people submit their feedback, Steve? To submit your feedback, you can go to our Facebook page, which is Panels to Pixels, facebook.com slash Panels to Pixels. I do this every week, and every week I try to do be a little dif bit different. So uh, go to our <laughs> Facebook page, facebook.com slash Panels to Pixels. You can check out our website, which is Panels to Pixels podcast.com. We can be heard on just about every podcast player of choice, I think. Mark said one last week called Deezer. I didn't even know there was such a thing. So uh, apparently yes. we're on that. We're on Bulldozer. I don't know what Bulldozer. That's, that's not true. Um, but <laughs> we're currently on Spotify, Apple Podcasts, Google Podcasts, and Amazon Music. Yeah. So yeah. you could check us out there. Eventually, the other podcast networks will be for there sure, too. For sure. For well. sure. You can as also as send as us. You can also send us an email at panels to pixels one at gmail dot com. That's panels to pixels one. The T O is spelled out right in the middle, and the number one at gmail dot com. We are also on YouTube. Uh, panels to pixels podcast. So go there, give us a thumbs up, subscribe, and check us out. Awesome. So next week's episode is episode four of the second season. So please send us any of your feedback as you want. Obviously we're doing a spoiler filled podcast for the second season of the boys. So if you've watched ahead, just put in your description of what you've watched and just tell us what you felt about that particular episode and we'll read it or play your voicemail for that particular podcast. And where can listeners listen to us? Well, Jason, where could you be listening to? If you go to podcastica.com, you can find links to all my podcasts. Awesome. Cool, very cool. I'm right here on Panels to Pixels, obviously, which is on the Next Level Podcast Network. I also joined Mark on the Adrenaline Cinema podcast last week for Lethal Weapon. That's on the Pirate Core Entertainment Podcast Network. I send various voicemails to the <laughs> Podcastica shows, as uh, Jason uh, just talked about so you can hear my voice on some of those podcastica network shows yeah, as well this is the first podcast i've been on in a long time where you didn't call in i know <laughs> <It's>... <laughs> <laughs> what about you mark where can our listeners catch up with you well i can be found right here on panels to pixels as well just the same as you sending out feedback to all my friends just like jason rima paik everybody all my friends that do podcasts 
and I send my feedback to their particular podcasts as well. So you can find me here on a Panels to Pixels podcast, which will remain here, but I'm also on Adrenaline Cinema, which you co-hosted last week, which you already explained to the listeners. You were on the Lethal Weapon episode, which I am so happy that you were on. And with that, next week's episode listeners if you're into adrenaline cinema podcast well next week i have my friend daphne who is part of the pyrocore entertainment network and she's going to be on the movie coverage of battle royale which came out in 2000 it's a japanese movie so that's cool if you're not into subtitles i haven't seen that this will give me an excuse i've wanted to see it for a long time yeah do so because I've been following that movie since it came out. So. You know, when I first heard the plot, I think I thought, oh, that's too dark for me. But now I'm completely desensitized. It seems <laughs> tame. I'm ready to watch it. <laughs> so, yeah, you could find me on, here on Panels to Pixels, sending out feedback to other people, as well as my other podcast on Adrenaline Cinema on the Pyrocore Entertainment Network. And that's pretty much it. So thanks, everybody, for listening. I'm Mark. I'm Steve. And I'm Jason. And this was Panels to Pixels. And we'll see you on the next panel. Good night, everybody. Good night. Good night. Good night.